Well, joining me now is Dr. Fadi Juda, who is a, an award-winning Palestinian-American poet and doctor. Dr. Juda, thank you for joining me, uh, especially because I understand uh, you have lost several family members in Gaza amidst this ongoing conflict. How are you doing? What news? Uh, what happened? Uh, we're, we're holding up uh, not easily, uh, not well. I have my parents with me. They are survivors of 1948. They are elderly. Um, I want to take care of them. During these times, um, they have um, a recurrent flash uh, of memories, as you can imagine. Um, and uh, as for uh, the dead and the displaced in Gaza, I think that one um, may know of a few names and numbers, but we, we won't really know until this is over um, uh, how many um, losses uh, has each one of us uh, suffered or endured. Can you describe to our viewers uh, your understanding of what it's like for Palestinians right now who are trapped in Gaza? I know I'm speaking mostly to an English uh, or, or an American audience. And in Houston, a couple of years, a uh, few years ago, we survived a flood where we had no electricity and our house was flooded with millions of others, and that was traumatizing to everybody. Um, in Gaza, people um, are on the verge of uh, accepting that this may be their last breath. Uh, a cousin of mine who is uh, destined to get married, doesn't know if she will have her wedding, sent a voice message to us saying, this may be my last day. She's 23. Um, and uh, if it is, then I want to die at home. I don't want to be dead on the street or found in a car fleeing. Um, it's a tragic thing to think that a 23-year-old just beginning her life and future uh, is, is dealing with. Um, I think that what I would also say, and I'm quoting the great Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish when I say this, um, there is that no victim uh, kills another. There is in the story a victim and a killer. And this may sound complicated to many, may make many defensive, but I think if we start from the standpoint that we are all have equal humanity, truly equal humanity, no matter what the explanations and the spinning of things, um, it's really, are, are we able to start from that standpoint? People have no shelter, no, no food. The, the children are terrorized. Um, I have to live with stories of my mother telling me and my father telling me about their childhood. And I want to protect my children from it, but now I can't because they're asking me questions. Nobody wants their child to grow up for generations upon generations with stories mm. like this. I spoke uh, this week, I've been speaking all week to Israelis who were caught up in the attack on Saturday and they spoke about the powerlessness they felt messaging family members who were not with them but they knew were in danger. And I'm struck now talking to you that you kind of this is a mirrored experience. You are in the process of talking to your family members who you are cut off from. Can you just explain to our viewers what that, what's that like and, and what help you can give them from a distance? They know that we can only give them prayers and occasional messages that go through in a, in a time of absolute destruction. Um, there, there is nothing else. They, they are amazing people, um, but also people who, as I said, who are at the extremity of saying, we trust in God or in the unknown. They, they, they are free of, of all our needs and anxieties such as mine and yours perhaps because they really they really have had their lives reduced to its last breath to its last hope to its last thread and while i do not wish this on anyone i never have foe or friend or what have you the palestinian situation is relentless and continuous 
For others, there is potential for respite, for recovery, for regaining, restarting a life. We are witnessing another nearly half a million Palestinians are now displaced again, and they may never go back to Gaza. God knows where they'll end up. How many times can a people be displaced? How many times can a people be on the verge of having their lives and memories erased? Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you for not interrupting Doctor. me. I, I would like to add one more thing, you know, about the, the idea of homes as well. Homes hold memories. And, you know, it's not just homes, but even if they are vacant of their residence, they, 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 there is a mass murder to memory. These people will lose all their papers, their photo albums, their ch children's toys. You know, yes, they are simple material things to, to regain, but these are the stories we need to understand about Palestinians who have endured this relentlessly for decades. Just asking Doctor, that to see Palestinians Doctor, as Doctor, equal Fa human beings. Dr. Fadi Judah, thank you uh, and my condolences. Uh, and I really hope that you are able to connect with family members in Gaza and I hope they can try and stay safe however they can. Thank you so much. Kira, I'll send it back to you. James, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.